right. Good morning. Happy Tuesday, Brian Knight. Good morning. Thank you. Happy Tuesday to you, John. Glad we are here. And we are in Leviticus chapter 13, uh, reading out of the New Living Translation. Uh, we started in Genesis 1 1, and uh, here we are as we continue on through the Bible, word by uh, verse by verse, chapter by chapter, book by book. Mm -hmm. We're actually currently tied right now with our uh, men's group, so we caught, we caught up to them. <laughs> yep. But that's okay. That's all right. Yeah, it's perfect. Um, how are you? Good. Yeah, I'm feeling feeling good and, and ready to conquer the day. There we go. I like it. Well, good morning, everybody. Um, hope you had a good weekend. And sorry about yesterday. We didn't we didn't read yesterday uh, on a Monday, but here we are. So get back on track here for the for the new week. Uh, so open your Bibles to Leviticus 13. Serious skin disease diseases plural. Um, it's a long one, so uh, grab your your coffee and get ready to uh, go down this journey. Uh, but hope you had a good weekend, Brian, and uh, hope your family's doing well. And thank you, all that good stuff. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, they are. It's uh, going. Everybody's going strong. No complaints here. Great. And you too. I, I uh, you guys had a little fun, and that's good to hear. I'm away. Yeah, yeah, it was good. Good family time. Uh, well, so here we are. Yep. Um, Leviticus really thirteen. Get to it here. Yeah, I mean, it says it's a long one. Next out of this here, uh, I could read from uh, verse one down to oh, I don't know, verse twenty-four. Yeah, let's go. That sounds good. You want to take it from twenty-four down? Perfect. Okay, we'll just do that then. So uh, we'll pray it in, dear Lord. Uh, we just we're grateful for for having Christ within us, yeah. as we talked about last night, Brian, and, and that was very powerful in our men's group. And um, we just uh, keep us safe today and give us strength. Amen. Amen. Good. All right, here we go. So, Serious Skin Diseases, Chapter 13, Leviticus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron, sorry, let me actually turn down my background music. The Lord said uh, to Moses and Aaron, if anyone has a swelling or a rash or discolored, discolored skin that might develop into a serious skin disease, that person must be brought to Aaron the priest or to one of his sons. The priest will examine the infected area of the skin. If the hair in the affected area has turned white and the problem appears to be more than skin deep, it is a serious skin disease. And the priest who examines it must pronounce the person ceremonially unclean. Mm. One sec. Yeah, baby. You need to ask mommy for help. Okay, you need to go ask mommy and please shut the door. Thank you. All right, verse four. But if the affected area of the skin is not only a white discoloration and does not appear to be more than skin deep, and if the hair on the spot has not turned white, the priest will quarantine the person for seven days. On the seventh day, the priest will make another examination. If he finds the affected area has not changed and the problem has not spread on the skin, the priest will quarantine the person for seven more days. On the seventh day, the priest will make another examination. If he finds the affected area has faded and has not spread, the priest will pronounce the person ceremonial, ceremonial, ceremonially clean. It was only a rash. The person's clothing must be washed and the person will be ceremonially clean. But if the rash continues to spread after the person has been examined by the priest and has been pronounced clean, the infected person must return to be examined again. Verse eight, if the priest finds that the rash has spread, he must pronounce this person ceremonially unclean for it 
is indeed a skin disease. Anyone, verse 9, develops a serious skin disease must go to the priest for examination. If the priest finds a white swelling on the skin and some hair on the spot has turned white and there is an open sore in the affected area, it is a chronic skin disease. That's not good, Brian. Nope, not good. And the priest must uh, pronounce the person ceremonially unclean. In such cases, the person um, need not to be quarantined before it obvious that the skin is defiled by the disease. Twelve. Now, suppose the disease has spread all over the person's skin, covering the body from head to foot. When the priest examines the infected person and finds that the disease covers the entire body, he will pronounce the person ceremonially un, um, ceremonially clean. Since the skin has turned completely white the person is clean but if the but if any open sores appear the infected uh, person will be pronounced ceremonially unclean the priest will make this uh, pronouncement as soon as he sees an open sore since open sores indicate the person I'm sorry presence of a skin disease 16 however if the open sores heal and turn white like the rest of the skin, the person must return to the priest for another examination. If the infected areas have indeed turned white, the priest will then pronounce the person ceremonially clean by declaring, you are clean, explanation mark. Let me take a sip of my energy drink. Mm -hmm. You are clean. You are clean. Okay, 18. If anyone has a boil on the skin that has started to heal, but a white swelling or reddish white spot develops in its place, the person must go to the priest to be examined. If the priest examines it and finds it to be more than skin deep, and if the hair in the affected area has turned white, the priest must pronounce the person ceremonially unclean. The boil has become a serious skin disease. But if the priest finds no white hair on the infected area and the problem appears to be no more than skin deep and has faded, the priest must quarantine the person for seven days. If during that time the infected area spreads on the skin, the priest must pronounce the person's ceremony unclean because it is a serious disease. 23, but if, but if the area grows no larger and does not spread, it is merely the scar from the boil and the priest will pronounce the person ceremonially clean. Mm -hmm. 24. Yep. You want me to pick up here? All right. This is your turn. All right. If anyone has suffered a burn on the skin and burn area changes color, becoming either reddish, white, or shiny white, the priest must examine it. If he finds that the hair in the affected area has turned white and the problem appears to be more than skin deep, a skin disease has broken out in the burn. The priest must then pronounce the person ceremonially unclean for it is a clear clearly a serious skin disease but if the priest finds no white hair on the affected area and the problem is appears to be no more than skin deep and has faded the priest must quarantine the infected person for seven days on the seventh day the priest must examine the person again and if the infected area has spread on the skin the priest must pronounce that the person ceremonially unclean or it is clear, clearly a serious skin disease, but if the affected area has not changed or spread on the skin and has faded, it is simply a swelling from the burn. The priest will then pronounce the person ceremonially clean, for it will only it is only the scar from the burn. 29. If anyone, either man or woman, has a sore on the head or the chin, the priest must examine it. If he finds it is more than skin deep and has fine yellow hair on it, the priest must pronounce the person ceremonially unclean. It is a scabby sore of the head or chin. If the priest examines the scabby sore and finds that it is only skin deep, but there is no black hair on it, he must quarantine the person for seven days. Um, on the seventh day, the priest must examine the sore again. He finds the scabby sore has not spread and there is no yellow hair on it <clears throat> and it appears to be only skin deep. The person must shave all their hair, all the hair except their hair on their affected area. Then the priest must quarantine the person for another seven days. Only on the seventh day 
Well, he will examine the sore again, and if it has not spread and appears to be no more than skin deep, the priest will pronounce the person ceremonially clean. The person's clothes must be washed, and the person will ceremonially is will be ceremonially clean. But if the scabby sore begins to spread after the person is pronounced clean, the priest will do it must do an, another examination. And if he finds that the sore has spread, the priest does not need to look for yellow hair. The infected person is ceremonially unclean, but if the color of the scabby sore does not change and the black hair is grown on it, it is healed. The priest will then pronounce the person ceremonially clean. If anyone, either man or woman, has shiny white patches on the skin, the priest must examine the affected area. If he finds that the shiny patches are only pale white, this is a harmless skin rash and the person is ceremonially clean. Clean. Verse 40. If a man loses his hair and his head becomes bald, he is still ceremonially clean. And if he loses the hair on his forehead, he simply has a bald forehead, he is still clean. However, if a reddish white sore appears on the bald area of the top of his head or his forehead, this is a skin disease. The priest must examine him. And if he finds swelling around the reddish white sore anywhere on the man's head, and it looks like a skin disease, the man is indeed infected and with a skin disease and is unclean. The priest must pronounce him ceremonially unclean because of the sore on his head. Those who suffer from a serious skin disease must tear their clothing and leave their, uh, their hair uncombed. They must cover their mouth and call out, Unclean! Unclean! As long as a serious disease lasts, they will be ceremonially unclean. They must live in isolation in their place outside the camp. 47. Treatment of Contaminated Clothing Now, suppose mildew contaminates some woolen and linen clothing. Woolen and linen clothing and the hide of an animal or anything made of leather. If the contaminated area in the clothing and the animal hide, the fabric, or the leather article has turned green, greenish or reddish, it is contaminated with mildew and must be shown to the priest. After examining the affected spot, the priest will put the article in quarantine for seven days. On the seventh day, the priest must inspect it again. If the contaminated area is spread, the clothing or leather is clearly contaminated by a serious mildew and is ceremonially unclean. The priest must burn the item, the clothing, the wool and linen fabric, and the piece of leather, for it has been contaminated by a serious mildew. It must be completely destroyed by fire. 53. But if the, the priest examines it and finds that the contaminated area has not spread to the clothing or the fabric or leather, the priest will order the object to be washed and then quarantined seven more days. Then the priest must examine the object again. If he finds that the contaminated area has not changed color after being washed, even if it did not spread, the object is defiled. It must be completely burned up whether the contaminated spot is on, inside, or out. But if the priest examines it and finds that the contaminated area has faded after being washed, he must cut the spot from the clothing, the fabric, or the leather. If the spot later reappears, on the clothing, the fabric, or the leather article, the mildew is clearly spreading and the contaminated ob object must be burned up. But if the spot disappears from the clothing, the fabric, or the leather article after it has been washed, it must be washed again. Then it will be ceremonially unclean. These are the instructions for, the, for dealing with mildew that contaminates wooden linen clothing, woolen, linen, woolen or linen clothing, or fabric, or anything made, uh, anything made of leather. This is how the priest will determine whether those items are ceremonially clean. Ooh. There we go. 13. That's right. Lots of uh, how to take care of uh, messed up stuff. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, that is true. That is true. Um, I just am so grateful that uh, Christ is within us now. Yeah, me too. Um. You know, and, and this is this is definitely a different time. But, you know, you know, we had a, I mean, how do you take this, Brian? Where do you, 
after reading this chapter? What, what do you take away from this? I mean, this chapter to me is, is really about, you know, it, it, it's like, Hey, we, we, uh, God knows how to take care of his people in the wilderness. He knows the sicknesses out there. He knows that there's diseases that are happening, you know, and he, he's made a way to, uh, protect the people, you know, you know, then, and then he knows the seriousness of mildew and how that'll, that'll just wreak havoc on people and on the body. I mean, so, you know, it's, Oh, God's dealing with this. I mean, yeah. This is, this is, this is, yeah, it's serious. This is obviously, this is, this is serious stuff. God is, 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 like you said, man, he's, he's right here. He's, he has a yeah. process. He's using the priests. He's working with the people. He's, um, yeah, well, they don't want them all to die, you know, of some disease. Yeah. To be honest, that's, but but the Lord knows, like he, you know, like you said, uh, Moses is not a scientist, you know. But God is. Well, I, I said that was a few chapters ago about the uh, uh, all the animals, um, what to eat, what not to eat, unclean versus clean. Exactly. And. You know, at first I thought it was Moses talking. I'm like, how does Moses, how does Moses know all of these different animals? What did, what did he, he just became like a, um, an animal scientist. Right. How does right. he know all this? I mean, it's just like all these complicated big names and all these little details about all these different animals. It's like, oh no, this is, this is God. Oh. There we go. Of course, God knows all the animals, all the names, all this, all that. And, uh, you know, God is writing the Bible through man. So of course it makes sense. It's like, Oh, okay. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. God is the, God is the greatest scientist of, Oh, he knows all. Yeah, exactly. God is the greatest scientist of, of health and medicine and healing and skin diseases and everything like that. And God is working through every doctor right now. And scientist, God is Absolutely. all. I am. I am, quote unquote. Yahweh said, "I am." That I love. That I am. I am all. I am everything. that is good in this world. And, yeah, that's uh, it's great. I know. It's easy to. It's man. That just sums it up, right? I am that I am. Yeah. You know, and I he am. he is, and he's working through. Uh. uh Every scientist, every doctor right now, every nurse, every healthcare worker, just to to give them wisdom on, on on all these things. It's great. That's how he does it. Yeah. You know, man doesn't isn't born with all this knowledge. You know, God reveals it to him mm -hmm, mm -hmm. every single time. I uh, I would love to read fourteen. Yeah, you want to? Yeah, let's just keep it moving. Go. You know, let's keep it moving here. Um, unless you want to talk a little more on 13. I think, I mean, not, not really. Yeah. Pretty straightforward. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think it's, uh, really cool that we're talking about the I am of Yahweh. And it's so true. Now it's just a good point that God is in control and he's working and, you know, it's, uh, it's an amazing thing, you know? Um, yep. Amen to that. Amen, Amen to that. Amen to that, exactly. All right. Cleansing, uh, Leviticus 14, cleansing from skin diseases. Oh, yeah. Uh, 14. And then the Lord said to Moses, the following instructions are for those seeking ceremonially purification from a skin disease. Those who have been healed must be brought to the priest who, who will examine them at a place outside the camp, if the priest finds that someone has been healed of a serious skin disease, he will perform a purification ceremony using two live birds um, that are ceremonially clean, a stick of cedar, some scarlet yarn, and a hyssop branch. Five, the priest will order that 
one bird be slaughtered over a clay pot filled with fresh water, he will take the live bird, the cedar stick, the scarlet yarn, and the hyssop branch, and dip them into the blood of the bird that will that was slaughtered over the fresh water. The priest will then sprinkle the blood of the dead bird seven times on the person being purified of the skin disease. When the priest has purified the person, he will release the live bird in the open field to fly away. Mm. That's nice. I'm glad the bird lives. Right? <laughs> oh, yes. The garbage guy's taking my garbage. Sweet. I had one of those. Uh, it's garbage morning. Uh huh. And my garbage was way over full. And like some places we've lived, like won't take it if it's above the lid. Yeah, I know. I know. Which is ridiculous. But uh, here in Primeville, man, they'll, they'll take it. It was way high. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry. I'm looking out my window right now. No, Thanks, fine. garbage guy. All right. I'm glad the bird lived. Fly away, birdie. Very good. Verse eight. Go free. Go free. I don't know. God knows when a bird falls from the sky. Yes, he does. That. Don't forget that. Verse 8. The persons being purified must then wash their clothes, shave off all their hair, and bathe themselves in water. Then they will be ceremonially, ceremonially clean and may return to the camp. However, they must remain outside their tents for seven days. On the seventh day, uh, they must again shave all their hair from their head, including the hair of the beard and eyebrows. They must also wash their clothes and bathe themselves in the water. Then they will be ceremonially clean. Mm. Ten. On the eighth day, each person being purified must bring two male lambs and a one-year-old female lamb, all with no defects, along with a grain of offering of six quarts of choice flour moisted with olive oil and a cup of olive oil then the uh off the officiating officiating priest will present that person for purification along with the offerings before the lord and the entrance of the tabernacle the priest will take one of the male lambs and the olive oil and present them as a guilt offering lifting them up as a special offering before the Lord. He will then slaughter the male lamb in the sacred area where sin offerings and burnt offerings are slaughtered. As with the sin offerings, the guilt offerings belong to the priest. It is a most holy offering. The priest will then take some of the blood of the guilt offering and apply it to, to the lobe of the right ear, the thumb of the right hand, and the big toe of the right foot of the person being purified. Mm. 15, then the priest will pour some of the olive oil into the palm of his own left hand. He will dip his right finger into the oil in his palm and sprinkle some of it with his finger seven times before the Lord. The priest will then apply some of the oil in his palm over the blood from the guilt offering that is on the lobe of the right ear. The thumb of the right hand and the big toe of the right foot of the person being purified. The priest will apply the oil remaining in his hand to the head of the person being purified. Through this process, the priest will purify the person before the Lord. 19. Then the priest will present the sin offering to purify the person who was cured of the skin disease. After that, the priest will slaughter the burnt offering and offer it uh, on the altar along with the grain offering. Through this process, the priest will purify the person who was healed, and the person will be ceremonially clean. Night 21. But anyone who is too poor and cannot afford these offerings may bring one male lamb for a guilt offering to be lifted up as a special offering for, for purification. The person must also bring two quarts of choice flour uh, moist, moistened with olive oil for the grain offering and a cup of olive oil. The offering must also include two turtle doves or two young pigeons, whichever the person can afford. One of the pair must be used for the sin offering and the other for the burnt offering. 
on the eighth day of the purification ceremony, the person being purified must bring the offerings to the priest in the Lord's present at presence of the tabernacle, at the entrance of the tabernacle, I'm sorry. The priest will take the lamb for the guilt offering along with the olive oil and lift them up as a special offering to the Lord. Then the priest will slaughter the lamb for the guilt offering. He will take some of its blood and apply it to the lobe of the right ear, the thumb of the right hand, and the big toe of the right foot of the person being purified. 26. The priest will also pour some of the olive oil into the palm of his own left hand. He will dip his right finger into the oil in his palm and sprinkle some of it seven times before the Lord. The priest will then apply some of the oil in his palm over the blood from the guilt offering that is on the lobe of the right ear, the thumb of the right hand, and the big toe of the right foot of the person being purified. The priest will apply uh, the oil remaining in his hands to the head of the person being purified. Though this process, I'm sorry, through this process, the priest will purify the person uh, before the Lord. We're about half. You want, you want me to take over? Yeah. All right, 30. Thank you. Sure. Then the priest will offer the two turtle doves. Yeah, these, these two chapters are pretty long. Mm -hmm. Then the priest will offer the two turtle doves or the two young pigeons, whichever the person can afford. One of them is a, is for a sin offering and the other is for a burnt offering to be presented along with the grain offering. Through this process, the priest will purify the person before the Lord. These are the instructions for purification for those who have recovered from a serious skin disease. But whoever, but who cannot afford to bring the offerings normally required for the a ceremony of purification treatment of contaminated houses then the lord said to moses and aaron <clears throat> when you arrive in canaan and the land i am giving you as your possession i may contaminate some of the houses in your land with mildew the owner of such a house must then go to the priest and say it appears that my house has some kind of mildew before the priest goes into this and goes in to inspect the house, he must have the house emptied so nothing inside will be pronounced ceremonially unclean. Then the priest will go in and examine the mildews of that walls. If he finds the greenish and reddish streaks and the contamination appears to go deeper than the walls, the priest will step outside the door and put the house in quarantine for seven days. On the seventh day, the priest must return for another inspection and if he finds that the mildew on the walls of the house has spread the priest must the priest must order that the stones from these areas are removed contaminated material will be taken out of the house outside the town to a designated to an area designated as ceremonially unclean next the inside of the walls must be scraped thoroughly and the scrape scrapings dumped into an unclean place outside the town other stones will be brought in place, replace the ones that were removed, and the walls will be replastered. But if the mildew reappears after all the stones have been replaced and the house has been scraped and replastered, the priest must return and inspect the house again. And if he finds that the mildew is spread, the walls are clearly contaminated with a serious mildew. And if the house is defiled, it must be torn down, and all its stones, timbers, and plaster must be carried out of the house. To the place designated as ceremonially unclean. Who those who enter the house during the period of quarantine will be ceremonially unclean until evening, and all who sleep or eat in the house must wash their clothing. But if the priest returns for his inspection and finds that the mildew has reappeared in the house after the fresh plaster, he will pronounce it clean because the mildew is clearly gone. To purify the house. The priest must take two birds, a stick of cedar, some scarlet yarn, and a in the hyssop branch. He will slaughter one of the birds over a clay pot filled with fresh water. He will take the cedar stick, the hyssop branch, and the scarlet yarn and the live bird and dip them into the blood of the slaughtered bird and into the fresh water. Then he will sprinkle the house seven times. When the priest has purified the house in exactly this way, 
he will release the live bird in the open field outside the town. Through this process, the, the priest will purify the house and it will be ceremonially clean. 54. These are the instructions for dealing with serious skin diseases, including scabby, sores, mildew, whether on the clothes or in the house, and a swelling on the skin, a rash, discolored skin. This procedure will determine whether a person or an object is ceremonially clean or unclean. These are the instructions regarding skin diseases and mildew. Leviticus 14. We just read 13 and 14. Interesting. Um, man, God is good, you know? He's there. He really he is. He is just, man, always wanting to heal, right? That's exactly. what I mean. It's just the word heal gets me in the, in the heart here. It's just, it's just that. He is. He's that always heal, man. He's always wanting to heal. Man, that's a great way to say it. I just love it. It's just you know, I, I do want to say too, one second quick. Story. There's just something so peaceful of drinking some coffee in the morning and just reading reading the Bible with you, Brian. And, yeah. Everybody and everybody listening and just or no matter what day you're listening time of day you're listening to the recorded version, but it's just something really peaceful about it. It really you is. Know, just, I feel comfortable. You know how sometimes you're homesick when you're a kid or in summer camp or if you play video games too late at night or something. You just kind of get this weird homesick feeling. Like when I read the Bible, I'm not homesick because I'm mm-hmm. home. Mm-hmm. I like that. Yeah. It's like it's where I should be right now in life. You know, there's times in life where you're where you're doing something and you're like, I shouldn't be here. I shouldn't be doing this. Yeah. And you feel it in your soul, like the Holy Spirit, you know, is working, mm-hmm. saying, Hey John, you shouldn't be in this situation. But when I read the Bible, I'm like, oh, I'm like, I'm home. I'm I'm more home than going back to my childhood home. Man, that's a great, great way to say it. Like I'm, yeah, I'm, this is it, man. This is, uh, this is what I'm, I need to be doing. I like it. Mm. I would love to read 15. Yeah. Let's see. Is it super long? It's not that long. No. 30. How much, how much time do you have? About 20 minutes. Oh yeah. I'll just read it. Cause then the next chapter, um, Leviticus 16, um, kind of continues on at the 13, 14, 15 is kind of, um, kind of all kind of connected as far as the, um, the cleansing and, and uncleansing. Yeah. So if we, we kind of bulk all these three chapters together. It should be great this morning. Let's so, do it. Yeah, let's do it. Okay. Bodily discharge is 15. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron, give the following instructions to the people of Israel. Quote, any man who has a bodily discharge and ceremonially is ceremonially unclean. This defilement is caused by his discharge, whether the discharge continues or stops. In either case, the man is unclean. Any bed on which the man with the discharge lies and anything on which he sits will be ceremonially unclean. So if you touch the man's bed, you must wash your clothes and bathe yourself in water and you will remain unclean until evening. If you sit where the man with the discharge has sat, you must wash your clothes and bathe yourself in water and you will remain unclean until evening. If you touch the man with the discharge, you must wash your clothes and bathe yourself in water and you will remain unclean until evening. If the man spits on you, you must wash your clothes and bathe yourself in water. That's not good. And you will remain unclean until evening. Any saddle blanket on which the man rides will be ceremonially unclean. If you touch anything that was under the man, you will be unclean until evening. You must wash your uh, clothes and bathe yourself in water and you remain unclean until evening. If the man touches you without first rinsing his hands, you must wash your clothes and bathe yourself in water and you will remain unclean until evening. Any clay pot that man touches must be broken and any wooden utensil he touches must be rinsed with water. 
Hmm. 13. When the man with the discharge is healed, he must count off seven days of the period of purification. Then he must wash his clothes and bathe himself in fresh water, and he will be ceremonially clean. On the eighth day, he must go to uh, must go get two turtle doves or two young pigeons and come before the Lord uh, at the entrance of the tabernacle and give his offering to the priest. The priest will offer one bird for a sin offering and the other for a burnt offering. Uh, through this process, the priest will purify the man before the Lord for his discharge. Mm. 16. Whenever a man has an emission of semen, he must bathe his entire body in water, and he will remain ceremonially unclean until the next evening. Any clothing or leather with the semen on it must be washed in water, and it will remain unclean until evening. After a man and woman have sexual intercourse, they must each bathe in water, and they will remain unclean until the next evening. Uh, you know, we look, we read this, Brian, it's like, you know, this is a, this, these are three chapters that everybody should be reading. Mm -hmm. I mean, just, I understand that this was, you know, talking more about, um, of course, this is, you know, before Jesus came and this is more of the tabernacle and yeah. this group of Israelites in the woods and approaching God and sacrifices. Like there's, there's more layers to this. This is not just everyday living. Uh, at, for the time, which maybe I'm incorrect about that, but I guess my point is, I think we can all do a little better job of yeah of reading these three chapters and taking care of ourselves and, and cleaning ourselves and being aware of our smell or our presence or our skin or you know, and it, and it reminds me of uh, I'm paraphrasing, but like our body is a temple. And, um, absolutely. I think Jesus said that and, and, uh, just this world is such a gift and it's such a blessing to be living. Let's take care of ourselves. Yeah. Good point. We should, we should take the time. You know, these are great. These are great, great reminders that, you know, life's dirty, you know? Mm. Well said. Yeah, it is. Yeah. You know, um, take care of ourselves. What, what God's saying. You know, I think it's important. Uh, Nineteen. Can we take it? Yeah, we can finish it. All right. Whenever a man, uh, excuse me, whenever a man and whenever a woman has her menstrual period, she will be ceremonially unclean. Notice it said whenever a woman has her menstrual period. Just kidding. She will be ceremonially I mean, unclean. I don't get it. Uh, you know. Well, now the oh. <laughs> 2021. Yeah, like Will's but, comment I mean, last night. That was great. Yeah, men can now have menstrual periods. Apparently. Yeah. I guess it's a new evolutionary process. Yeah, what does God know? Yeah, not much, I guess, in their <laughs> eyes. Yeah. Anyone who touches her during the ceremony, during this time, rather, will be unclean until evening. Anything on the which the woman lies <laughs> or sits during the time of her period will be unclean. If any of you touch her bed, you must wash your clothes and bathe yourself in water, and you will remain unclean until evening. If you touch any object she has sat on, you must wash your clothes and bathe yourself in water. You will remain unclean until evening. This includes her bed or any other object she has sat on. You will be unclean until evening in, if you touch it. If a man has sexual intercourse with her and her blood touches him, her menstrual impurity will be transmitted to him. He will, make, he will remain unclean for seven days, and any bed on which he lies will be unclean. 25. If a woman has a flow of blood for many days that is unrelated to her menstrual period or the blood continues beyond the normal period, she is ceremonially unclean. As during her menstrual period, the woman will be unclean as long as the discharge continues. Any bed she lies on and any object she sits on during this time, that time will be unclean just as during her normal menstrual period. If any of you touch these things, you will be ceremonially unclean. You must wash your clothes and bathe yourself in water, and, and you will remain unclean until evening. 
When the woman's bleeding stops, she must count off seven days, then she will be ceremonially clean. On the eighth day, she must bring two turtle doves or two young pigeons and present them to the priest at the entrance of the tabernacle. The priest will offer one for a sin offering and the other for, other for a burnt offering. Through this process, the priest will purify her before the Lord for the ceremonially impurity caused by her bleeding. 31. This is how you will guard the people of Israel from ceremonially uncleanliness. Uncleanness, Otherwise they would die, for their impurity would defile my tabernacle that stands among them. These are the instructions for dealing with anyone who has a bodily discharge. A, a man who is unclean because of an emission of semen or a woman during a menstrual period, it appears to any man or woman, it applies rather to any man or woman who has a bodily discharge and to a man who has sexual intercourse with a woman who is ceremonially unclean. There we go. Yeah. Look at that. 13, 14, and 15. Awesome. Yeah, we're, we're making Leviticus. progress. Yep. We'll be on, uh, we'll do uh, Leviticus 16 and 17 tomorrow morning as we uh, as we continue on through this great journey of uh, Leviticus. Yes, so, it's awesome. Um, let me turn on some background music here. You know, we read three chapters and uh, we both got to get going, but... Uh, Man, God bless everybody. Jesus is king. Mm -hmm. And uh, is Jesus with uh, Christ in us? You explaining that last night, Brian, was amazing. It was, yeah. It was great. Christ yeah. in us, the hope of glory. Um, dear Lord, uh, thank you for bringing us together on this amazing Tuesday morning. And uh, thank you for your word. Uh, we feel at home. Yeah. When we're reading your word and staying in the Bible and walking the path with Jesus, we just feel at home. It's just it's where we need to be. It's where we should be. We just we feel it in our souls, and that's an amazing thing. And we want to bring as many people as we can uh, with us and in, in, in your word. And, and we want everybody to walk with Jesus and um, just keep us safe, give us strength. And uh, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Beautiful, John. Thank you. Brian Nice. Thanks, brother. It's been fun. Yes. Okay, cool. We'll see you guys tomorrow morning for 16 and 17, and who knows, maybe even 18. Right. We're making good, uh, steady progress here. We're going to stay in the Word every morning, guys. I know sometimes we might miss a morning and miss a day or something, but uh, we're here. We're not going anywhere. And continue to join us. If you're listening for the first time, catch up, and let's continue. Amen. Well said.